It is Monday, August 28, 2017 at 1 o'clock Eastern Time, and this is Admissions Live. I'm your host, Adam Castro, and on today's live broadcast, we are setting the table for Admissions' largest professional develop conf development conference, NACAC 2017 in Boston, Massachusetts, which begins on September 14th. NACAC has been gracious enough to give us access to two very busy NACAC Conference Local Advisory Committee members, Jeffrey Gallant and Kathy Moody, to talk all things NACAC 17. We're super excited to have them on. Uh, it's going to be a great show, uh, chock full of knowledge and uh, fun facts about the conference. So, And I'm going to Boston, and I'm very excited about it. Uh, so I have a special keen interest about what they have to say today. Admissions Live is part of the Higher Ed Live Network. Our episodes offer you direct access to the best and brightest minds in education. Be part of our live broadcast by sharing your knowledge. Participate in today's discussion by tweeting us using hashtag Higher Ed Live. All of our episodes are free and easy to access in the video archives at higheredlive.com or take Higher Ed Live with you on the go by subscribing to the podcast. Higher Ed Live is produced by M. Stoner a digital first agency committed to tailored solutions that drive real results. Have you ever wondered what perspectives teens are thinking when they receive and read or ignore your institution's recruitment marketing? The third study in the myth busting series in partnership with NRCCUA is the first to focus on the complete enrollment marketing mix. We want to determine the ways colleges and universities reach prospective teens and encourage them to apply to your institution. Sign up now to receive early access to the research results and the white paper, and I'll be tweeting out a link to that shortly. Admissions Live is also sponsored by NRCCUA, producers of the weekly Eduventures Wake Up Call newsletter. Subscribe and get weekly updates on the most pressing issues and trends in higher education. And again, I'll tweet that out so you can sign up for that as well. Okay, so uh, as I mentioned, uh, please follow along with us today if you have any questions. Um, for Jeff or Kathy, uh, feel free to send those to hashtag Higher Ed Live. I'll be monitoring that during today's episode, and I'll get those questions out to our local advisory board members. Um, so let's get right into it. Um, two awesome guests, awesome conference coming up. Uh, so I'd love to just hear from you guys a little bit about your background uh, and certainly how you obtain your role on the local advisory board. And Kathy, why don't we start with you? Sure. I'm a school counselor here in Massachusetts. Um, I'm going into my 20th year, so I'm excited, I think, about that. Um, I did a, a five-year quick stint in admissions way back in the 90s, which feels very long, like a long time ago, but um, switched sides of the desk and started in, in, in my current job. So I've been here at Linfield High School. We're about 20 miles north of Boston, so not in Boston proper, but we like to consider ourselves close enough. Um, I have been involved with uh, NEACAC, the local um, affiliate here, in, since I started working in the field. Um, so I've had a number of different roles and, and been happy to be active and on committees and going to conferences and just being a part of the whole NEACAC and NACAC scene. I've been fortunate to be able to go to um, NACAC conferences for many of the years that I've been um, in the field too. So. I'm fortunate. It's hard for counselor, school counselors sometimes to get to the conferences, but I've um, I've served as a delegate. Uh, I've presented a couple times, so I'm I'm happy to say that I've I've been able to get there um, <laughs> each and every year. Uh, my how did we get involved with LAC? I I, I think uh, someone threw my name in a hat and just picked it. Maybe <laughs> <I don't know. laughs> um, we were approached by uh, the NIACIC president at the time, and uh, John Wester, I believe, and he asked me if I would consider this this really awesome um, opportunity. So I, when I heard who my co-chair was going to be, I said absolutely yes. Um, Jeff and I have known each other for a long time and um, have been fortunate to to work together. And it, it just it, what a great opportunity to be able to to be a part of something so local, but also to do it alongside such a, a consummate professional. So. Awesome, and you have a much easier commute to the conference this year than in yeah. The past, so <laughs> that's an added bonus. Yeah, uh, and I, I still don't understand how the clutches of the college admissions world let you go. Um, to go into to school counseling after a couple of years <laughs> in, in higher ed, but we'll leave that. We'll leave that to everybody's imagination. Uh, <laughs> Jeff, welcome. Uh, please introduce yourself. Great, thanks, Adam. Thanks for thanks for having us. Um, I worked in college admissions since two thousand two. Um, uh, I uh, my first job in admissions was at Stonehill College in um, 
in Easton, Massachusetts. So um, I'm very appreciative for Stonehill to help me break into the field. And it's a, if I could put a plug in for it, it's a terrific institution. I probably could still see myself at Stonehill, <laughs> except in 2004, um, I had an opportunity to return to my alma mater, Boston College. And, and that particular year, there were five openings in the office. I'm not sure if there have been five since then. So I had to, <laughs> I had to, I had to take uh, advantage of that. You know, I, I think it's nice to, uh, to enter a competition and be the fifth place of medal winner, but still be on the podium. <laughs> I'm just uh, but it, no, it, it's been a great field for me. It's been a terrific fit. I really enjoy my work. Um, yeah, as Kathy said, you know, I, we were approached by a then NIACAC President John Westover in 2015, and even 2015 feels like a long time ago. <laughs> it, 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 we've really been given an appreciation for the, the the level of preparation, advanced preparation, and time and effort uh, goes into to planning this event. Um, but I'm excited uh, to work with Kathy. Like she said, we've worked together. She's got a great personality. We think we're a pretty good team. We work really well together. And we've assembled some terrific people to work with us. So we're really, really excited um, to welcome you know, colleagues from our domestic colleagues, our international colleagues um, to Boston, to, to our region, to our affiliate, and to our city. Awesome. So, I mean, I, I must say that you guys both seem really, really calm <laughs> or having this enormous conference coming up, um, which is a, just a monster. I mean, I've been to you know several NACACs over the years, and I, I'm always impressed and or slightly terrified about the size and scope of, of an event like this. So let's talk a little bit about that. And, and, and Jeff, I'll, I'll keep it with you. You know, talk about your role on the local advisory committee. You know, what, do you, what are you going to be doing in preparation for the conference? And now, obviously, with it starting very soon, uh, while you're there. Sure thing. I mean, I think our, our primary role is to serve as ambassadors and experts, you know, for the city of Boston. And up until this point, I think the main thing we've been doing is just trying to promote um, the opportunity to volunteers here in our affiliate and beyond, kind of starting to mobilize those volunteers to get people excited in the different subcommittees that, that we sort of oversee. Um, and then once the conference starts, you know, we anticipate just trying to assist NACAC um, to make it a very enjoyable experience, um, you know, for all participants and all involved. Uh, you know, the nice thing about Boston and where it's going to be, you don't really need to do anything to sell the city. It's really, mm -hmm. a, it's a modern convention center. It's a beautiful, or relatively new part of the city that's really designed for, for conventions and for you know, travel and business travel. Um, so, it, you know, it's going to be, it's just going to be just trying to make sure that face to face, you know, we're, we're greeting people, we're making people feel welcome, we're answering their questions, we're, you know, um, any sort of putting them at, at ease, which I think we're, we're ready to do. And I, I just have to say, you know, we've just gotten tremendous support from both NACAC and the folks that we've been able to work with um, through NACAC, and then also our affiliate. And, you know, and it just, it's just an example of that, I think, is, um, I think we set a record for the number of college tours being offered. You know, Sherry Geller from Ginn Academy here in Massachusetts and Jeff McAdam, who's formerly of Simmons College here in Boston, now is at Kent Hill in Maine. You know, they've been our subcommittee chairs for that. And um, they're doing a great job coordinating that, that, that record number. But I think it speaks to the buy-in that we've gotten from New England colleges and universities. And then also, too, school counselors, CBOs, um, it international counselors, independent counselors, you know, a lot of them seem to be taken advantage and, you know, it is sort of, um, it, it is a costly conference. I think managers like yourself, Adam, are doing everything to make it possible for as, as many of their staff members to go as, as, as possible. But um, it's not, it seems like people are taking advantage of it, especially on the high school side and are, are planning to spend, you know, some extra time in Boston and see some schools. And that part of it is just working out great. Yeah. Well, I mean, well said. Kathy, is there anything you'd like to add to that? No, great job, Jeff. Yeah. I was about to say, I'm not going to be tough to um, You know, the, I, like, I like how he uses the term ambassador. Um, I, I know one of the other things that we've worked hard to do um, is to assemble as many volunteers as we can. I, I, we're grateful, tremendously grateful for all of our local folks who have jumped in and at, at every conversation we've had with, with them along the way, say, what can we do to help? 
Um, so you're going to see a lot of, of Boston volunteers, um, as well as people from all over the country. Um, that The volunteer signups are coming in, and they're strong, and, and it's, it's really encouraging that people want to be involved because, um, as you said, it, it's a tremendous endeavor. Um, being on the behind the scenes, it's, it gives you a whole new appreciation for the, the logistics of it all. And, and while, thank God, we are not planning it personally, <laughs> um, it's, it's really interesting and fun to be able to be on this side of, of it um, from a planning perspective. Great. So I, I think the first thing you have to do is get everybody there, right? So uh, <laughs> I wanted to, to certainly talk about, you know, tips and tricks that you guys could give. I mean, being locals. Uh, mm -hmm. about advice about getting in to Boston, you know, by the airport. I wrote a couple of things down, you know, is Uber big? How do you get around the city? Um, what do the distances look like? I mean, I know people shouldn't be wearing their Yankee jerseys <laughs> to Boston. Like, you know, any types of tics, tips and tricks that you guys may have uh, about the conference? Um, I, I'll jump in. When you look at distances, I think the official I think the official distance of the airport to the convention center might be all of three miles. Um, but Boston is known for traffic. In Boston, it, it, while it's an awesome city, it is not laid out in a grid format under in any way. So, from a travel perspective. Um, <laughs> Uber definitely is an option. Um, if, if folks are coming into the airport, um, we have what's called the MBTA, um, which is our transit authority, and that includes buses and trains. Um, the Silver Line, uh, they're, they're each, each line has a different color to it, but probably the easiest, most straightforward route from the airport, um, if you want to take public transportation, would be the Silver Line. And there's lots of um, information about that on the MBTA website. In, when you're in the airport, it will, there are signs that will direct you there. So that's probably, I think, the, the easiest at this point. Just jump on the sil Silver Line. It will bring you down to um, around that waterfront area, um, it actually brings you to what's called the Trade Center, and that's down the street from the Convention Center. And that's very easy to, to get in and out of and very accessible. Um, so Uber is big. I think it's big in every city. Um, taxi student, uh, I say students. <laughs> mm -hmm. Colleagues can take taxis for sure. Um, and um, I actually wouldn't recommend renting a car because that it's a lot of work and uh, it's not a great city if you don't know it well to be driving around. So that would be my, I would say either the Silver Line, which again is, it's the MBTA, but we affectionately call it the T. So if, if folks are hearing that being thrown around, that's what that is. And then, um, or Uber, or, you know, if you happen to see another colleague in the airport, hop a ride with them. Cool. So Jeff, you mentioned before, you know, uh, about where the conference is and where it's laid out in the convention center. So what are we looking at in terms of the main hot hotels for the conference and their distance relation to the, the convention center itself? Yeah, um, everything's right there. You know, there, there, I think a number of attendees will be staying in the, the seaport area. And like I said, it was an area of the city design to attract, you know, um, events like ours. And so the sidewalks are large. <laughs> easy to navigate. There are a lot of dining options and, you know, convenience stores and, and amenities that you would need close to these areas. I do, we do get the sense that a good amount of um, participants will be staying outside the Seaport District. And you know, I think Kathy summed it up well, you know, it, Boston's a tough city to drive in, um, but it's a small, it's a small city land wise, you know, not population wise, but land wise. So it is a place where the public transportation system is manageable. Um, and, and something that's efficient. And so if you're staying outside of the seaport area, um, it's, it's color coded. The lines are color coded. So it's pretty easy to memorize. You know, um, Kathy, I absolutely agree. The silver line is the best option from the airport. But if you're going a little bit outside and say you're, you're flying in, you're going to go to your hotel room and hotel before you're hitting the convention center. Um, green, orange, blue, red. Those are the, the main lines. Um, so that, uh, you know, it, it, it won't be too bad getting back and forth, even from neighborhoods outside the seaport. But yeah, you know, I think Yankee fans are, are safe, Adam. You know, we have a lot of New York, New Jersey college students around here, uh, especially this time of year. The way things are going this past weekend, I don't know if they'd bring any Cavaliers gear. And uh, if any of the participants have any Roger Goodell masks that they own, I'd probably leave those at home too. But you might be all right if you're a Yankees fan. You might be all right with the Yankees stuff. All good advice. All good advice. <laughs> That's, these are important things to, to know. So 
Jeff, I want to stay with you because, you know, I'm getting ready to go to NACAC in a couple of weeks. Very excited, as I mentioned. But what do people like me that are getting ready to go need to know or need to do before uh, we hit the road to Boston for the conference? Yeah, I, I, again, um, you know, just in this role, I get a real appreciation for for the professionals at NACAC, you know, how good they are at holding one of these events. So I would just say, you know, pay attention to the, the correspondence that are going to be coming out from NACAC in the next week or so, two weeks. Um, you know, I, I think there's a webinar on Friday that's free um, at 3.30 Eastern Standard Time on, on, on Wednesday. Um, just things to know before the conference. Um, and then, uh, you know, a couple other sort of emails that are going to come out. You know, the conference app goes live August 31st. That's where you're going to be able to match up sessions with their individual rooms and get a sense of where things are going to be. And then there are a few others that, that we were just notified of recently, you know, what to know before you go. That email comes out September 5th. Uh, what to know when you arrive that comes out September 12th and then other than that you know we're, we're hoping that the weather's going to be um, great uh, mm -hmm. but I think September in New England it just you got to pack in layers especially if you're from a, you know a different different part of the country or world than than Boston you know I think packing in layers will be important as long as we're not sho shoveling snow we'll be all right. <laughs> yeah, if that happens we're all in trouble yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Kathy anything you want to add to that no, the, the layers piece is important. You know, yeah. typically in September, it's, it's te you know, the temperatures are as high 60s. The evenings can definitely get cool. Plus, we'll be down on the waterfront. Um, so definitely pack a jacket. And as with every convention center, the air conditioning will be going full blast. So those rooms will probably be chilly. Um, so the, the layer piece is important. That's good. Everybody will, will stay awake in this session. That's exactly what we're doing. <laughs> so, so one of the, one of the things I love about any conference, but NACAC probably is the best, uh, is when you scan the room and you can pick out the first timers that have never been to the conference before because they kind of like the deer in the headlights. Look, exact. There you go. Uh, so, what advice, Kathy, uh, would you give uh, a first time attendee on how to maximize their experience at the conference? Uh, I would take get your get your conference book or use the conference app. Certainly, I, I actually like the book piece of it, but um, and plan out some of the sessions you want to go to ahead of time just to stay organized. Um, bring a, a large pile of business cards and uh, sort of make it your mission to hand them all out if you can. Um, that's a good sign. It means you're making connections. Definitely talk to as many people as you can, and, and, and by that I don't mean people you know. <laughs> if you can kind of go outside of your comfort zone and talk to folks that you know are, are new to you, are they're, they're either vendors or um, other from, from the high school side, other college folks that you may never have met before, um, and just sort of do your best to expand your horizons. Um, a lot of times, you know, I've been to conferences before where I'm, I'm the only one from my office, so kind of finding someone to eat with is a little daunting. I feel like a high school student, but um, it's easy. It's really easy. You're never going to not find someone who won't sit and have a meal with you. So that's a great way to network. It's a great way to be social, um, and it's a great way just to get to meet new people. Everyone's going to be open and, and willing to understand, um, you know, and don't be afraid to say, hey, I'm a new timer. This is the first time I've been here. Um, what do I need to know? Because it, we're a great, warm, and welcoming community, and you're always going to find someone who's going to share some time with you, without a doubt. Nice. Yeah. And we'll give you the little ribbon, too, that everybody knows you're the first timer. Or yes. Something. That's Is what that it in looks there? like. Okay, good. That's what it looks like. It's a green shamrock. Yay. I like it. I like it. Jeff, anything you want to add to that? Well, I mean, yeah, it, no, I agree with Kathy. It just, you know, don't be afraid to hang around with us. Um, <laughs> you know, we'll be in the hospitality area, the the committee and our volunteers. Um, we're both, I think, sporting sort of what it's an Under Armour pullover, gray pullover that will distinguish us. One of the days we're going to have these softball shirts on, um, so you know. Um, a great way to kick it off is that, you know, and if you're looking for things sort of on the social side of things, that welcome reception, you know, on Thursday night, which is 6.30 to 8. Um, uh, our chairs for that are a, a uh, gentleman by the name of Danny Richer from Northern Essex Community College, where he has the quintessential Boston accent. I think it's worth just going to the reception just to listen to him talk. Um, uh, he's got, he's got, go, he's got Will Hunting beat. Uh, and then, and then, um, 
Tim Cushing from Brewster Academy in New Hampshire. He's just a, a, a great guy as well. And then also to, you know, Council Preview Day, you know, some of these first timers will be there on Friday for Council Preview Day. That's shaping up really nicely. Cicely Shaw from Boston Trinity Academy, Helen Burke Montague from Moses Brown are putting together a nice event for that population on Friday. Nice. I wasn't going to bring up the Boston accent, but it is one of my favorite accents. <laughs> nice. That's nice planet. to say. Yeah, so it'll it'll be great. I want to I want to meet as many Bostonites as I possibly can, uh, get, and get my you know money's worth with the accent. But um, so let's talk about the agenda a little bit because I think that's probably the most daunting thing, particularly for you know a, a first timer or, or someone that's used to going to smaller uh, professional development opportunities and conferences. So uh, it's massive. I've already started looking at it online, uh, and even online, it's you know it's there's so much there. So can you talk a little bit about, you know, how it's broken down, you know, how do you tackle it? Uh, Kathy, you did mention, you know, pre-plan, um, but, you know, can you give us a little bit of information about just, you know, kind of the thought that went behind it from the NACAC point of view and how it's kind of set up? So each day starting on uh, Thursday, so Thursday, Friday, Saturday, there will be um, certain blocks of time education that are set aside for the education sessions. And what you can do is you can look at the schedule at a glance to start, um, which is actually up on the, on the NACAC site at this point, and you can actually see each of the education sessions that are being offered. And there's, there's a lot, <laughs> for sure, but they're broken down by um, whether who the audience, the target audience should be. So it could be just for, or it could be for school counselors, for admissions folks, for both. Um, so it's nice in that it, it will um, kind of help you where your target audience is. But I would also encourage folks to, you know, you can go to admissions ones if you're a school counselor. It's not, you know, sometimes you learn some interesting things in that sense. Um, I would say um, if you are going with a, a handful of your colleagues, um, I think divide and conquer is a good thing to think about because if you all are in the same session, there's so many sessions, I think you can, you have access. I think if you're able to kind of spread it out a little bit, you're all going to be able to share that information, which I think is nice. Um, there's always going to be sessions that, oh, I wish I could go to that one, but I really want to go to this one. So um, sometimes it just comes down to picking one. Um, but it's it, it, the more work you can do ahead of time, even if you just pick a handful from each session to go to, um, and then you can read up on the bios of the folks that are presenting, and then you can also look at the, the description of the um, of the session, and then you can kind of pick out the ones you want to go to. And using the, the con I'm put a plug in again for the conference app, you can actually um, plug in the sessions you want to go through, and it will send you reminders, which is awesome for those of us who need, uh, who use their phones quite a bit to, uh, to get that little ding reminder, this session is coming up in the location of where it's going to be at. So a lot of great options, a lot of things on like tre current trends, um, just best practices, you name it. It's, it's soup to nuts and it's, it's amazing just how many options we have. Yeah, I love the divide and conquer comment. I, <laughs> I can't tell you how many times I'm in a session at a conference and I look across the way and I see one of my staff members, I'm like, what are we doing? This, this, <laughs> this, this, this is inefficient. <laughs> at best. Uh, so Jeff, I want to, so let's, dive into it a little bit. I mean, you guys have looked at the agenda. So mm -hmm. are there any cool sessions? Uh, I particularly like the, uh, you know, the sessions that maybe people get a little aggressive in or <laughs> <laughs> the, con the controversial sessions. But I mean, is there anything that has caught your, your eye in particular in terms of sessions? Yeah, sure. I mean, I, I think um, it's hard to pinpoint one session because, you know, like you said, it's just so vast. Um, but I, I think the nice thing about, um, the education tab on the conference website is you can you you can like Kathy said you, you can come up with a game plan, um, and I think I I've been impressed with the just the the the, the number and the quality of the um, sessions for the high school side you know for the mm -hmm. school counseling community it seems there's a lot there um, and I think there's gonna be a, a fair share of those you know hot button. You know, sort of hot topic issues to go to, but I just think there's also a lot, and, and you've seen you've seen how the schedules evolve through the years. You know, I think there's just a lot of opportunities very early on in the conference throughout the whole thing. You know, the you know some of the things to highlight. You know, the real talk, a conversation about diversity, bias, and cultural fluency. You know, 
the workshops are capped, but there are two of them um, mm -hmm. going to be offered. Those tech labs where you know their opportunities, they're interactive, they're hands-on, they're throughout, you know, and just helping counselors integrate technology and social media into their counseling. Um, the learning labs, you know, just things that are that fast-paced, interactive. You know, to hear those kind of words. You know, you, definitely you've seen how the, the, the schedule has evolved. So I, I think there is, <laughs> there's definitely an opportunity to be very tired at the end of these <laughs> days because I think you know, the schedule allows you to really maximize your time at the convention center. Yeah, I, that, that, that's, those are great points. And, and I, I'll never forget NACAC 2015, the coalition application. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's one of the best ever. Saturday morning. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, Kathy, what's catching your eye on the on the agenda? Um, I, you know, ah, there's so much. There's so many that I want to go to. Um, there was one that said that I think there was one titled "Rex That Save Lives." Um, <laughs> <laughs> so I, I never miss an opportunity to go to a college recommendation writing one because it's it's a a craft that you know it can be always improved. So that one jumped out for me. Um, there were a couple on financial aid that I, I will say on a personal note, I'm going to put my parent hat on. I have a daughter who's a senior, so I, I, I want to know as much as I can about the <laughs> financial aid in particular. So you might find me in a couple of those, um, masquerading as a school counselor, but really a parent. Um, and then I guess the one that really jumped out and it, it kind of speaks to a little bit of my nerd side is um, there's going to be a session on the SBGP, the um, Statement of Principles of Good Practice. Um, I was involved with our local AP committee for a number of years and admission practices, and it, it's fascinating, <laughs> believe it or not. And I actually, I'd encourage everybody to just read up on it. These are, these are documents, this is a document that governs our, our professional behavior and, and what we do as an organization, and changes are being made, and, and it, it's trying to kind of keep this document current. So while it seems like it might be a little dry, it's really not. I trust me on this. It's actually very interesting. I think it might be a Saturday session. Those are the sleeper hits. Don't don't shy away from a Saturday session, especially if, you know, these are folks that are going to give you some great information. And even though it's the end of the conference, um, rally, because it, you, you won't be disappointed. Yeah, that's some great advice. And, and so a couple of these topics that I'm really interested in this year and there's a ton of information on test optional, uh, mm -hmm. particularly on the admission side, which I, there's like four or five uh, different sessions that, that focus on different things. Um, uh, self-reporting, um, two areas that I'm kind of moving into at my institution, uh, both test optional and self-reporting data uh, from our applicants. And then international education, I think, is just going to be that hot button topic just because of the political climate. Um, people are going to be coming in there very passionate. I think people are going to kind of use this as not a soapbox, but certainly a, a, an arena in which to get some thoughts out and, and some of the personal stories that they're seeing on their campuses working with international students. And I think that's really important for everybody to hear uh, at the conference. So really uh, interested in seeing how that goes and, and attending those sessions as well. Uh, I do want to get into the networking asset aspect because I, I know over the years I've gotten a huge, as much out of the networking aspect of NACAC than the sessions. Um, so I wanted to get your advice, and Jeff, I'll start with you, about what are the best ways for people to kind of engage uh, and really network with other professionals, like-minded people uh, at this conference. Are there any kind of tips and tricks that you may have for them? Yeah, I mean, like like you said, I mean, it, it can be incredibly valuable to do, but it, it's tough to do sometimes, right? Especially, you know, I've been fortunate that most of the NACX that I've attended, I've attended with other staff. Um, so you already have some people that you know. Um, and when you don't have that, yeah, it, that just, I think, adds to how intimidating the experience can be. Um, I, I think NACAC does a good job facilitating that, helping with that. You know, I think um, you know, the, some of the things we've mentioned, the, the, the welcome reception, the meet your match you know, opportunity that's going to be in the pad folio, the opportunity to start a conversation that way. Um, you know, I, I think certain parts of the conference, the, you know, the vendor area, or, um, you know, often vendors and colleges or other organizations are inviting 
people to receptions after or associated with the conference or breakfasts. You know, if you receive one of those invitations, you know, that might be a good way to, to create some relationships with people that you can sort of hang out with um, for, the, um, for the duration of the conference. And then also to certainly taking advantage of some of these built-in mechanisms could bring, you know, could give you some knowledge that'll bring back to your office to enhance your overall operation. I'm like 0 for 5 in meet your match games. I, I, can't, I, I don't think, I think people are just avoiding me at this point. Uh, so this year I, I, I pray I can find this, this elusive person. Uh, that's my match at the conference. We shall see. I, hopefully I can break the streak. Um, so let's talk a little bit about, I mean, networking, you, you mentioned the social aspect of the conference as well. So Kathy, can you talk us a little bit about some of those fun, maybe non-academic type things <laughs> Uh, that are available at NACAC and how people take advantage of those. The the invites are starting to come in and it's it's exciting. Um, I, I actually look really look forward to seeing like what some of the events are going to be um, for that for that week. If you check the box that you want to be a part of these things, um, when you registered, you should be getting either emails or actually some are actually sending actual invites over. So that it might be um, you know. Grab, a, grab some cocktails and, and hors d'oeuvres from five to seven one of the nights, or it might be a luncheon that a particular school is putting on, um, or it could be just a full-on social at a local restaurant or bar. So those are, um, first of all, they're great ways to get food and not pay for it. <laughs> so um, you can kind of keep your, your meal or your, your meal charges down. Um, but it's also, you know, like-minded people, we're all in a room, and it's very easy just to chat it up with someone as you're, you know, grabbing an hors d'oeuvre or even having a drink or whatever works for you. So going to those, say yes. Say yes to these invites, um, and try not to overcommit yourself because um, you can you can find yourself in a lot of different places on a, a Thursday or Friday night. Um, but, again, they're meant to give folks a social place um, just to kind of relax and unwind but you can actually get a lot of great conversations in at that point and you'll see you'll end up seeing sort of um, some of the same folks in and around those those events and if again if you're going but don't be shy about going by yourself you will inevitably find somebody else who's there by themselves or you know just start up a conversation um, I think it's interesting that we have you know when you work in admissions and even in school counseling you're social people by nature that's what we that this is what we do we like to talk to people um, we like to talk to kids but when it comes to talking to adults for some reason we get a little bit ner more nervous about it so um, I'd encourage you to get, gather up those invites, get a calendar together, figure out what's offered which night, and space them mm -hmm. out a little bit, um, and um, I can guarantee you that you'll end up not even just not just exchanging business cards, but you just meet some interesting people and some fun people that um, are are in the city for the first time, and, and you're all sharing the same experience. Yeah, I completely agree with you. I think you know people like to joke about the the parties and the the get-togethers uh, particularly with vendors but it's an incredibly important part uh, of the conference because that's when you know people have had a long day uh, mm -hmm. they just want to relax they just want to have a little fun kind of reset uh, and get ready to go for the next day and it's just one of those you know we're, we're constantly formal um, <laughs> if when we're working with our third-party vendors and, and it gives you an opportunity to be a little bit more informal get to know the people that are behind that part of the business uh, that's so important to higher ed. So um, that makes perfect sense. And and I think that kind of leads me into my next question, which is uh, I think the vendor area at NACAC is one of the most underutilized aspects of the conference. I think people are intimidated by it. I think people are going to get lost or they think people are going to be, you know, trying to pull them in and sell them something where it's, where it's not the case uh, at all uh, with the vast majority of the exhibitors. So, uh, Jeff, I want to talk to you. Talk to me a little bit about you know, your kind of your philosophy as it relates to the vendor section at NACAC and, and how would you encourage people to take advantage of that area? Sure. I mean, I think first off, just to know it's there, right? And I think, you know, there's some good people that, you know, in the in the areas that they they, they represent, you know, things change so quickly. So it, it is a really good professional development opportunity to take a swing through that area. Um, uh, I, I believe there are dining options um, in the convention center in the vendor area. So I feel like anytime you're hungry, you know, it, you're going to grab a meal anyways. You know, maybe you can just try to spend some time there. Also, too, a, a number of the vendors that will be represented this year are 
um, New England based companies. So certainly it's very important to, to us here in New England that, that those folks have a good experience. You know, vendors just in general make this happen. You know, they're an important part of the conference in many ways. So it's, it's great to have them there. I think they have a nice space in Boston. Um, so hopefully they'll, they'll, they'll find it to be a really good experience. Boston would be a very good experience for, for them as well. Nice. The Jack X, so our, our, our local uh, organization, has figured this out. And they, what they do is they have the vendor section and they put the coffee way back in the vendor section. <laughs> right. You have to go through. And you know, no one can live without the coffee. So you're forced. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, hopefully, you know, Nat Jack uh, does something like that as well. Kathy, yeah. do, do you want to add to that? I mean, coming from a school counselor, it's a little bit different. I think a lot of those vendors are often geared toward higher ed, but what is your experience uh, in the vendor section? I love the vendor section. There's there's lots of giveaways, there's lots of freebies, um, there's lots of pens, <laughs> so it's a great place to kind of go through and, and have some conversations. A lot of the, it's interesting, a lot of the vendors um, have ed education in their background. Um, some may have previously worked in admissions or previously mm -hmm. worked as a school counselor for some of the, especially for some of the companies um, that I've connected with. So. It's just, it's always great to just get a, an idea of where that person is coming from and to see them as an individual, not as a salesperson. Um, I'll give a plug to the opening reception that will actually, the, the food and uh, a little bit of fun will be had with in that vendor area. So I think it'll be nice, get a little nosh, but you can also um, get yourself in there just to kind of see what's out there for new and, and interesting products. Um, so it's, there are colleagues, just as, as admissions folks are, just as um, school counselors are. These are people we work with. Um, they have a lot of, of great products that this is a, a great way for them to kind of get the information out in a, in a, a pretty um, efficient manner to be able to see all of us. So um, spend a lot, just spend some time talking with them. They're, they're, I, I've never walked away sort of feeling like, oh my gosh, I don't want to go back in there. Um, and there's just some, some neat kind of giveaways and uh, freebies to be had. So a lot of grocery bags in my, in my trunk of my car for sure. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I do want to mention, and I just tweeted it out, uh, using, uh, the higher ed live, uh, uh Twitter account, uh, Megan D'Alessandro wrote a, a great article about, you know, the 10 ways you can best utilize the vendor section. So I, I encourage everybody that's coming to the conference to take a look at that, uh, and get some ideas and, and it, it falls right in line with what you guys are saying. Which is great. Okay, so let's go. Let's get to the really, really, really important stuff, uh, and that's the fact that Boston is this amazing city, um, you know, and and that people need to, or hopefully have the opportunity to explore uh, a lot that Boston has to offer outside of the convention center as well. Uh, so I need to know the can't miss stuff, uh, the best stuff, and and I jotted a couple of things down, but don't feel you have these. They are limited to to these, but. I need to know the best lobster roll. That's very important. Uh, the best local uh, adult beverage. Very important. Uh, I need to know what to get my eight-year-old girl and five-year-old boy as a souvenir. <laughs> That's something Boston related. Uh, and then any other fun stuff you guys want to throw out. So, uh, Kathy, you look very excited about answering this question. So why don't we start with you? Uh, okay. So best lobster roll. I would say... Uh, James Hook Lobster Company, um, and that that plug is a little bit shameless because um, the family is from Linfield, so aces to them. <laughs> but their their lobsters, their seafood is tremendous. It's all fresh. You can actually have lobsters shipped from there. Uh, I can't I can't say enough about them, and they're right on the waterfront, so they're they're easy to get to, very accessible. Um, but a great lobster roll. Just head over there at lunchtime, and they'll 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 do right by us. They will they will take good care of you. Um, local adult beverage. I, I'm. Uh, I like beer. I'm a beer drinking gal. Um, uh, <laughs> Harpoon, Sam Adams are probably the two biggest names um, that folks will recognize. But there, there are so many um, breweries in and around New England um, that that folks, if they like beer, they can have access to that. Um, and you just can't. I think you can't go wrong with those two names and particular in any of the beers if you if you're heading out into any of the local establishments they'll all have them on tap and uh, you can't go wrong with either and Sam Adams I don't know Jeff may have a preference one or the other but um, both make great uh, great drinks for sure 
Um, souvenir shops, couple things. I, I actually usually end up in the airport. <laughs> I'm trying to avoid that part. <laughs> I know. Um, there, um, just across the the way a bit, is a place called Faneuil Hall. Um, actually, some of the locals I think pronounce it Faneuil, but Faneuil Hall is a great place. It has um, shops. It's sort of they've got local shops. They've got a couple of restaurants. Um, so that's they've definitely got some souvenir shops there. So that's a great place to stop. And it's easy to get to. It's just a, a quick walk, um, probably about 10, 15 minute walk from the convention center. So I would recommend that. Um, and then I guess I'll, I'll put a plug in for some of the museums. Um, out on the waterfront, the Institute for Contemporary Art is, is not far. It's, that's an easy walk. And it's an amazing, amazing museum. It's, it's fairly new. It's probably under 10 years old, maybe. But definitely worth checking out, especially uh, it's a, if, if contemporary art is a little bit outside your comfort zone, go and see it. It's just the building itself is tremendous. Mm. Um, I would say the, the Greenway in, right in front of the um, convention center is a great place to hang out if it's a nice day. The Rose Kennedy Greenway is not a far walk. And that's that actually used to be, I think, highway before they did what we call the big dig, this big construction project in Boston. But they made it a green space right in the heart of the city. And there are food trucks there. There's a carousel. There's actually a sort of a, a small little um, water park there, spray park for kids. Um, but it's a gorgeous, gorgeous area. And you're sitting smack dab in the middle of Boston on grass. <laughs> there are grass and trees. So um, if you have some time just to take a walk. And then duck boats. I'll put one more plug in for the, the duck boats. If you want to take a tour around Boston, um, both on land and, and in the sea. Um, I will put a plug in for that because it's a great way to get to see the whole city in sort of a, in an hour, hour and a half snapshot and get some great history. Not always historically accurate, but some great history. Awesome. So, but we'll put the caveat out there that nobody's going to miss a session to do all the stuff that you just <laughs> <laughs> um, Plenty of time. On, on the, uh, on the downtime, the, they'll do all that stuff. Uh, no, those those are amazing. Uh, I'm definitely in for that lobster roll for sure, uh, and probably that harpoon as well. Uh, Jeff, anything to add to that? No, I, I agree with a lot of Kathy's recommendations. You know, another lobster place real close, James Hook is a great suggestion. Uh, Yankee Lobster Company is within a few steps. And then for chowder, I would probably say, you know, Legals is a is a well-known chain that I think is extended outside New England now. But um, there are two locations right right by the, the convention center and the hotels. It, you know, Kathy, it's really funny you brought up the Rose Kennedy Greenway. Um, Trillium, which is a you know, increasingly well-known beer company here, has a, a new beer garden right on the Rose Kennedy Greenway. And that's really oh. close to the north end. Um, so, you know, you could go get a meal and then check that place out. I'd also to say the Red Sox schedule works to our advantage here. Um, they'll be in town till Thursday night. So if you come in a little bit earlier and you have some time, um, but it's nice because our conference social on Saturday night will be House of Blues in the Fenway area. And it'll be good just to have that area somewhat to ourselves and not competing with a Fenway crowd. So you have the opportunity to see a game and then later on, you know, especially around the conference social, or if you're staying in a hotel in the Fenway, Kenmore area, um, you know, that, um, that'll give you an opportunity to, to have the best of both worlds and sort of spend some time maybe while the Red Sox are in town and then also while not. And I, yeah, I second definitely the duck tours. Also, too, there's a, there's a music venue in the seaport, uh, the, the, the Blue Hills Bank Pavilion. Um, there are a number of acts coming in the week we're there. So if you, know, you want to go there, it doesn't it's not going to take a lot of effort to get over there. Um, but, yeah, they, we, we're excited. Yeah, I think uh, there's definitely a lot to do in the city of Boston, and especially this time of year, you're going to see a lot of college students. You know, and I think you know, their energy is awesome, um, and hopefully, you know, you'll feel that participants will feel that while they're in the city. Nice, nice. So, uh, lot to look forward to, Kathy. Your recommendation has been has getting all kinds of Twitter approval right now for the lobster roll. So oh, good. You, yeah. took, it, you got instant gratification. So you did, you did well there, uh, which is fantastic. Uh, so we're actually, you know, running a little bit low on time, but I definitely wanted to get your guys thoughts, uh, some final thoughts about, you know, what are you looking forward to? I mean, you guys are working it. Uh, you volunteered a ton of your time to make this happen. Um, but as an attendee, uh, what are you most looking forward to uh, out of the conference? And Kathy, let's start with you. 
Yikes. Uh, I'm, I'm just, I'm excited to see colleagues and friends. Um, so maybe there's more of a social aspect to it, but I'm just, I'm excited to just have folks that aren't from the region coming to town and be able to reconnect, especially, you know, the, the admission side of things is always great to see um, folks who I know potentially are reading applications from, from our school, um, but also to make connections to see what's new on those campuses and to see how things are going. So I, I'm excited for the, the people side of it. Um, I, I, and I'm really excited to just um, see all of our New England folks connecting with, um, with the rest of the NACAC nation, if you will. Um, and we're happy to, to share our New England hospitality. I think in to show folks that, you know, Boston, even though we have a little bit of a reputation of being a little bit gruff, we're actually a really friendly city and, and we love hosting folks from all over, all over the country and all over the world. So. Awesome. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know if it's gruff, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, okay, great. So Jeff, what are you looking forward to most? Um, you know, I, I think I, I agree with Kathy, you know, it's just, you know, the, the facility is a really nice convention center, a lot of windows. Um, it's right on, it's right on the water. So you know, it should be great. And, you know, I'm sorry, I've been name dropping this whole time, but just to, you know, to, to close out our committee, it's Emma Brown from Bentley, uh, Liz Sharon at Northeastern, Kelly Bellavance at Boston College. They're the hospitality uh, mm -hmm. sub chairs, uh, Brian Posnanski from Boston University, Danielle Wells from Boston College, our registration. This wasn't intentional, loaded up with Boston College people. <laughs> a lot of life has happened for our whole committee since 2015, we'll just say that. Um, and then uh, Amy Sembor at Providence College, Erin Regan from Sharon High School in Massachusetts are um, logistical arrangements. But we, um, you know, one of the things I'm excited about, how they've incorporated Boston in a number of ways to the conference and things that, we can't talk about right now that will be nice surprises, probably some things we don't know about. But one thing that was really good is, you know, Boston's a pretty active city. Um, you know, I think a lot of people enjoy sports. I think with the marathon, it's, you know, it's, um, it's just, you know, part of the culture here. So I, I think um, in case we didn't mention it, you know, NACAC has done some really nice things in terms of, you know, replacing the 5K, which we can't do for, for a number of logistical reasons in the city of Boston, you know, with a step challenge, you know, there's gonna be yoga, um, one morning and both those going to benefit the Imagine Fund. So we want to make sure that, you know, we, we, we support that as well as it's been supported in the past with the 5K. Yeah, Jeff, I want to see you on that yoga mat. <laughs> How can you tell? I was, that's yeah, I mean, you just seemed, when, when you said it, you just seemed really excited about it. So. <laughs> no, that's, that's fantastic. And, 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 and it's people like you, and, and thank you for naming the, the committee members, and we thank them. Uh, for all the work that they're doing behind the scenes, and, and we're excited to to come out to Boston and meet them. Uh, you guys have been incredible. Uh, I think that you know our listeners are going to get a really good sense on what they can expect, uh, not only from the conference but from Boston as the host city, which is equally as important. Uh, I know, just speaking with colleagues from across the country, everybody is really excited uh, that the conference is in Boston uh, in the summer, in the late summer. It's just a perfect time of year. Uh, so we're all, and now I have to go on to StubHub immediately and find tickets for Wednesday night at Fenway. I've never been to Fenway. You just oh, reminded you me. You definitely go. Yeah, we got to make that happen. So it. uh, I'll probably be in third place by then. <laughs> it's still a lot, lot of season to go. Don't worry. Yeah. Still a lot of season to go. Uh, before we go, I want to thank, as always, uh, M Stoner. Uh, they make this uh, admissions live thing go. A uh, big thank you goes out to our program sponsor, NRCCUA. Uh, as well. Uh, thank you so much for the support uh, and having great guests uh, like Jeff and Kathy on Admissions Live. Guys, thank you so much. I will see you in Boston. All right. Thanks so Good much. Thank you. 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 Thank you.